Good evening, everyone. I'm Russ. I'm Mark. And this is a Spirited Endeavor. So this is going to be a fun episode. I've really been just looking forward to this. <laughs> so um, three months ago, or September the 12th or so, yeah. we uh, decided that we were going to cask our own whiskey. Yep. So we grabbed a, um, a, a flavor palette based on uh, what we thought was going to be, you know, our something appealing to us, throw it in a cask, yep. we were going to age it. Um, it's been sitting out in my garage for three months, you know, getting all the, uh, the heat and cold swings here in North Georgia. Yep. And um, so we're going to do our first tasting of this tonight. And uh, this could be interesting for anybody who's watching. This this may go fantastic, or you may see us both just keel over. It, it, absolutely, <laughs> it could yeah, go I mean, either way. Yeah. yeah. So um, so when we originally did this, we used Glen Morangi as our base. Yeah. And uh, we thought, you know, having a Highland, you know, having something with a, you know, a um, um, a, a flavor palette, you know, with uh, with car with the with the vanilla notes yeah. and the, the shortbread cookie would be a good base. And we were expecting that the oak is going to impart some of those tannins, or maybe dry it a little bit. So whiskey with some oils to it would help to offset that. And, you know, if any barrel spice was imported, well, Glen Morangy can certainly cope with that. For sure. So we, uh, we threw some others in there, some um, um, Ardmore, some Laphroaig to give it a little bit of a peat yeah. and smoke. Uh, we uh, I threw in some uh, some filler with uh, 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 naked grouse. Was naked one of grouse them. and uh, what was that other um, one? Johnny Car Walker. Did we do cardio in that one? I, I think we put some car I put some cardio in that too, and that was mm. kind of an afterthought, and that was sort of after the show. Uh, we have a five liter cask here, and I really wanted to kind of get it yeah. get it mostly filled, so we had as much contact with the barrel as we could get. Yeah. So this was. So this uh, this cask was pretty full by the time we uh, we finished with it. Um, you know, I've lost a little bit out of it. You know, the uh, the nozzle on it was a little leaky, but uh, oh, uh, the nozzle was leaky, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's over there. <laughs> That's so the angel share. Right? That would be the angel share. We found the angel. But now this, <laughs> this I'm really looking forward to this. I'm real curious to see just how much that barrel has imparted in that time frame, um, especially with the expansion and contraction, as you mentioned it with the temperature swings. Um, again, you had it in the uh, in the garage, so it was kind of exposed to as much of the temperature swings as we could, you know, facilitate. Right now, it's still somewhat temperature control. I didn't have it outside on the on the porch or something. You know, it was you know it was in a. Uh, it was in a room, but it's not heated, so um, you know, you know, it was able to to get some of that. Yeah. And then, um, depending on where we are with this, you know, we're either going to take a taste of it and like it, and if we like it, we're going to bottle it. And if we don't, then we're just going to put it back out there. Yeah. And let it go for another, you know, another three six months. Yeah. So, well, in, again, what does it impart in that short period of time? Does it impart anything? I'm just dying to know. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, and and all and us also doing the the, uh, I want to experience the flavor palette of the whiskeys that we put in there. Yeah, you know, with minimal with minimal aging. Yeah, and then um, then we'll see what it's, what it's like at uh, at various other times. Well, this is like a, a kind of a spin on the Infinity bottle to a certain extent, except this is going to impart some of its own stuff over time. Yeah, the uh, the thing I'm concerned about most is you know we you know we get wild temperature swings here. Yeah. Um, it could ve this could go very badly. You know, it could it could you know get too much of that barrel spice, and uh, that you know that could make it you know unpalatable at that point too. Yeah, I agree. And this was a charred barrel, if I remember correctly. It was. So there is a fair amount of surface area in there, and I would expect the whiskey is going to pick up on that oak pretty quick. Well, I want to get into it. I, yeah. All right. All right. Now I got nine one one on speed dial. All right. Very good. <clears throat> okay. So let's spin this around here. Uh, we might want to move the electronics. Yeah, probably a good idea. And uh, hi to everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening. All yeah, right. we didn't. Uh, we didn't throw out an advertisement for this one, but. Well, again, not yeah, knowing if we were going to survive it, it's like, do I really want that televised? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dun, 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 dun. Hmm. Wow. 
it's not really coming. Did our whiskey solidify? Uh, maybe. <laughs> so, Mark has, there's a tap on this one, fortunately, which makes drinking whiskey very convenient. Uh, but in this case, we have opened the tap and got just a little bit initially, and now we don't seem to be getting much of anything. Worst case, I suppose we can flip it. There we go. Hey, victory. Okay, so apparently our grasp of gravity is lacking slightly. Alright, a little bit. Hmm. Alright, so the angel share may be all of it. <laughs> the angel is thirsty. <laughs> Might be that seal. Oh, there we go. Now, yeah, now it's pouring. Okay, cool. Okay, here, let me, uh, Thanks, let me load you up here. Oh, that's a good point. We still have this, the bung in there. I said bung. Um, Ron mentioned it might be vacuum locked, which is a very good point. That is a very good point. See, this is why it's so important for you guys to be around. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so... Color-wise, it looks very similar to what went in, which uh, I think it's maybe a little bit darker than uh, than the Glenmorangie. Now, we didn't put any really dark whiskeys no. into this. So the, the Glen Mo has got that, you know, that golden, you know, yep. uh, uh, amber color to it. I this think, is very similar to that. I think the darkest one we put in there was the, uh, the Naked Grouse, because it's got that little bit of a sherry influence. But right. It was in such a small quantity compared to the volume in there that, yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. all yes. right. So, on the nose, that works nicely. That really does. Um, a caramel notes, vanilla. Yeah, a lot of what you would expect from the Glen Morangy, but I think I'm getting a little bit of a little bit more of a fruit note on that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not picking up any of the smoke or the peat or anything no. from the. Uh, I mean, we, I don't think we put enough in there to really make a huge difference. No, I agree. Let's just add just a little bit because, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. A lot of vanilla. Yeah. A lot of vanilla. That's a vanilla bomb. But yeah. I'm not picking up a lot of barrel spice. I'm not. Um, that said, it does seem a little tannic, like a little drying on the tongue. A little bit. But yeah, there isn't much in the way of barrel spice being imparted. Not at this point, anyhow. But yeah, yeah man, that is a vanilla bomb. Vanilla bomb. Oh, mm. uh, fruity. I'm getting a, mm -hmm. on the on the back end. Um, you know, the uh, uh, we put some fairly oily whiskeys in there, so I'm mm -hmm. getting a pretty pretty good uh, palate cling to that and it's giving me some of those fruity notes on the back end i gotta say i i kind of like the taste of that i really do too i'm almost getting like a coffee note to it too yeah yeah um just a little bit a little bit yeah um i was thinking more chocolate but yeah yeah i would see i could see that hmm not picking up really anything in the way of peat or smoke or anything like that um definitely got some nice fruit notes to it yeah it's very fruity very vanilla i'm kind of um, impressed with that i'm i'm surprised by own self <laughs> <laughs> all right wow hmm. all right um i need more I don't know. We know we know what went in this as far as quantity is concerned. That might be the tough part to work out. I could probably estimate. Hey, look, that worked. <laughs> Damn it! That's what you get when you play with your bone hole. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna chuck this one because I got floaters in it. Yeah, there's probably a little bit of little uh, remnants of the seal or the cast or yeah. something. Yeah. Ooh. Ron's trying the Jura 10 tonight. Good call, Mr. Schmidt. All right. Oh, you're on to us. 
Yeah, bootlegging. Yeah. Okay, okay now that. All right. That's so, a little darker than I thought. So that that darkened that darkened considerably. Yeah. All right. So the naked grouse is the only one I can think of that had any real color to it. And we didn't put enough in to cause that. Right. So maybe that we just didn't have enough in the glass to show the true color. Yeah. Here, so. matter of fact, let me look at that. Pretty. All right, that's got beautiful glass cling too. I mean, that's a great legs on that. Yeah, I'm impressed. Okay. Pardon me while we just drink this tonight, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can watch this uh, this podcast slowly go downhill yeah. into a drunken uh, stupor, and we're going to enjoy every second of it. Hmm. I hate to use the word, the S word, mm. but man, that is as smooth as I've ever tasted a whiskey. No, I agree. That's, you can sip on that all day long yeah i like the complexity though i i'm thoroughly impressed i'm yeah I'm, I'm trying to puzzle this one out a little bit it's not it's not deep it's not dark but there's a lot going on there you know on the initial you get that sweetness you get that kind of glen morangy aspect to it but then as it lingers on the tongue you start picking up these other elements yeah, the uh, elements of deliciousness. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, the uh, I, I'm I'm definitely getting more of that uh, that toffee element to mm -hmm. it, um, and and I'm I'm trying to trying to put my finger on the fruit. It's not like it's a like that green apple, but it's something milder, like a like a pear. I get a little bit of the green apple, but I agree with what you're saying, and that's I think the part that I'm that's why I'm saying there's complexity there because it's not just one it's not we've had other ones where that's all you get is okay look you get the, the creamy aspect of a Glen Morangy and then you get the, the little green apple there is far more going on in this glass God, we stumbled into that one yeah yeah it was a like mad science project that worked out yeah yeah um, pardon, pardon us we are kind of under assault here <laughs> yeah with a uh, fireworks going off in the background um, makes it exciting here in North Georgia indeed mm. man so um, what I you know I want to I want to try this now I want to I want to get a couple more casks and I'd like to do something you know that has more of a um, mm. you know more of a like a smoky element to it make our own peat monster make our own peat monster yeah I think I, I think that'd think be a hell to... of a lot of fun. Exactly. So this was fun, and um, you know, certainly um, there there are all there are all kinds of casks available. Like I, I bought this one on Amazon, and it was about eighty bucks. Um, there they have smaller ones. Uh, this one was five liter. They have one liter. They have two liter. You know, you can kind of get them as big as you want. Um, this one was charred. Um, others are not. Yeah. And, um, and so that you, makes a big difference. So depending on what your f flavor palette is, you know, wants to be, um, you can certainly uh, find the cask that would uh, um, suit you. Sure. Um, and then you just start mixing. So what? Where are you with this one? Would you change this? Would you set it back out and let it age a little bit longer? I mean, what's, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I think this one is so mild right now, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I. I, th I think this is fantastic, but I think it needs another. I, I think it needs another three to six months. I think a little bit more barrel impact would be nice. Yeah, uh, a little little spiciness on this would be mm -hmm. good. There's like no spiciness to this whatsoever. Mm. Mm. It is tasty. That said, I would be curious to see with the heavily peated, you know, a mix of like an Ardbeg ten and a Lafroig ten, and then maybe some of the uh, Kilolman to add some of the younger notes. Um, put that in a small cask where you get that vanilla added to it quickly. 
Mm. Oh, I bet you add viola to those. It could be interesting. You know what we need to do, though, is we need to get some, some cat strengths and put them in there. That's a good point. That's a really good point. And I'd like to see if we can measure it a little bit better the next time around. That way, if we find something that really friggin' works, we can reproduce it. Yeah, I agree. But the, the, the cask strength will, you know, the higher alcohol content will bring out more yes. of that barrel influence. Much faster. Absolutely. Because <clears throat> most of the whiskeys in this are, you know, 40 to 43% yeah. ABV. I think we may have a couple in there that were 46. Well, and that's an interesting point, too, is as we have that evaporation and that angel share, your ABV is actually going to drop. Oh. So, yeah. It's um, very possible that we could get this so it's underneath yeah. the 40% uh, ABV. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to look back and see what the hottest one that we put in there would have been. Um, the Glen Morangie, which was the bulk of what's in there, was 40%. The Lefroy would have been about 45%, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. The um, Cardew was like 43%. Yeah. But, I mean, most of them were mid to low 40s. So, yeah, it's entirely possible this may come out, come out lower than a 40%. Interesting. So, in, we may have made it um, to the point where it's no longer scotch. Yeah. But it will be, and again, I hate to, hate to say it, smooth. Smooth, yeah. And this is with extra O's. That's right. Smooth. Hmm. But man, I dig that. It is tasty. Mm. Not that bad actually, for a little... Yeah, not bad for a little just mad I science. I was expecting horrible things. <laughs> I really was. Because I mixed... Um, Glendronic, which is heavily sherry, with just the tiniest bit of Lafroy. And initially, having let it sit in the bottle, the Infinity bottle, for about a month, went back to it. Oh, God, that did not go well. Now, really? let it sit a little bit longer, and they, they mix better somehow, and it's a lot nicer now. But that initial taste was just got awful, and I really feared that's what we were going to have here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anything besides me keeling over is a win. No, this is this is actually quite nice. This is very pleasant. Yeah. And we could bottle this, like, tomorrow. And I think so. I, Again, what I like about it is it's a, it's a more complex Glenmorangie. Yeah, it really is. Now, it's no longer tastes like a Glenmorangie. Agreed. You get those aspects of it, but, no, there's so much more going on there. And you're right, there is a chocolate aspect that's certainly coming across mid palate. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's the thing I'm you know, as I'm drinking more of this, I'm getting more and more of that chocolate. Yeah. You know, which, like coffee chocolate kind of and I like that. Yeah, which is which is fabulous. Yeah. But it's almost like a <laughs> it's almost like a like a caramel macchiato. Mm hmm So it's a little little caramel, a little chocolate, a little you know, a little coffee, you know, a little little like that it's yeah. uh, it's sweet but it's you know but it's i'm still getting that little bit of green apple though i i i'm getting a little fruit on the back end yeah it's not green apple to me it's more pear but mm, i get i it. could see that wow i'm i'm really pleased with that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what are our friends saying uh so actually let's see looks like Oh, Tom Cushman's drinking a rusty nail with a John Begg, and he says that's really nice. That's nice. cool. Glad to hear you're enjoying that one. Now, I'd be curious. You've had, you, he had the Glenmorangie, I think the 14. Yeah, the 14. And then he had the Ardbeg. Oh, that's right, he did. So where does this fit between those two? Yeah, yeah. As a blend, <laughs> that, that's you've gone from one extreme to the other. I'm curious to see where this where this fits in. Uh, let's see, where it was? Do, 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 do. Come on now. While we, uh, while we drink more of this. Yes, absolutely. So Ron's going to be trying the Jura 10. Make sure to let us know what you think of that one, Ron. Um, that, to me, at the, now I don't know what it goes for up your way. Down our, down here it's around 35 ballpark. Um, I thought it was a really nice whiskey. Uh, perhaps a little bit better in my opinion than the Glen Morangie, uh, just because it had a little bit more of uh, darkness and complexity to it, uh, but a real nice one. So I'll be very curious to hear your take. Uh, Jason Thomas joined us. 
I think you were drinking Laphroaig last time. I'd be curious to see if you're still drinking that one. Yeah, very nice. Now the uh, the churras. Uh, I mm. mean, we're we're just in love with jura. Big fan. Big fan of that, and yeah. uh, you know, it's you know we're we're really impressed with the some of these smaller distilleries out there yeah. that are um, putting just artwork in a bottle. And I, I, I know we've said it a hundred times, and it's probably cliche at this point, but my God, you know, it's just yeah. you know they're you know you've got the. You've got the Glen Morangies and Johnny Walkers and everything where they go for a very specific flavor yep. and um, they do whatever they can to maintain that flavor. Now, you know, whiskey's going to, mm. you know, um, it, it's going to change every year because the crop is different, yeah. the conditions are different, you know, you're, you're not going to mix it quite the same, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, they're going to do their best to just, you know, to make that taste just like you know, a Glen Morangy. So every time you drink in that, you're getting Glen Morangy. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, you know, smaller distilleries like Jura, they're they're not doing that. Yeah, you're, you'll get a little bit more variation there. They try, but because they don't do the same volume, they're just not going to be quite as effective as getting that consistency. But there were some things to Jura 10 that I really enjoyed. It was, again, similar to a Glen Morangy in that, again, no rough edges whatsoever. But there's kind of a nutty aspect to it, if I remember correctly, on the back end. So I'd be curious to see if we get that. Ron actually says, excuse me, he's having the Glen Warren G14 right now. Nice. Good call. Now that's the La Santa, isn't it? La Santa. So you had really high opinion of that one. I, I really did. Correctly. Yeah. Now the uh, I love the sherry aspect of that. I mean, and to me that tasted like a like a great Jolly Rancher. Yeah. It really had that that fruitiness to it, that um, that sweetness to it, that was really just pleasant. And I just loved it. I love sherry influence. Mm. I'm not a big fan of port influence. Yeah, you weren't real thrilled with their port version. No. Yeah. And we've had a couple port ones where, again, it had that kind of musty funk to it. Um, the exception for me was the Kilholman, and I think that's because there's enough peat going on to kind of offset that. But yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. There is definitely a, mo a kind of a funky, like, basement funk that goes with some of those port influence ones. Yeah, yeah, that's a, you know... Um yeah, that's exactly kind of where I where I you know where I fall in that spectrum yeah. there. No, it's not for everybody, and I've heard other people say the same thing. It hits them wrong, so you're certainly not alone in that one. Now we've had some wine casks mm -hmm. that were absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. The Deanston, the uh, that Australian one stands. That Australian one. Holy cow! Oh, man. geez, that was that was amazing. I was. That's one that will stick with me for a long time. Well, that was done in a Pinot Noir cask. Yeah. And Very uh, that was the Star Ward. Star yep. Ward. Yep, Star Ward Nova, I think it was. Star Ward Nova. Yeah. And that had a, uh, yeah, that was a Pinot Noir cask. And man, was that taste. It there. just worked. I was pleasantly surprised. Because, again, with the port influence that we've seen before, it can be hit or miss. That worked. The Pinot really suited that scotch or that whiskey well can't call it scotch because it wasn't made in Scotland. Yeah, but it was a single malt. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, yeah, and, you know, all, all kinds of, all countries are making single malts at this point. And or many of them, I yeah. should say. That was something we were discussing just before we went on air was the availability of casks. You know, a year or two years ago, I don't remember seeing casks anywhere unless you went to somebody specifically that dealt with that. Now you've got them on Amazon. Uh, my wife Jo, she saw it in uh, Hobby Lobby. So that tells you just how popular this whole whiskey experience has become for people, which I think is a great thing, you know. You know, and you know, and we encourage you, you know, um, you know, if you want to, you know, you know, grab a cask, you know, throw, you know, throw your flavor palette in there, something that you're thinking about, you know, that you might want to. Want, might want to try throw it in there throw it out in your garage throw it you know throw it outside you know you know let the uh, let the, let the elements get, get to it, it. Yeah. yeah now a couple of things that need to be stated as far as that's concerned and these were points that you made on our initial uh, live feed concerning this number one you need to fill that with water yes uh, so there is some maintenance that needs to be done because when you get these things they are dry they will seep and leak 
Um, so filling them with water initially and letting them sit. Now, how long did you let it sit the first time? Um, first time was uh, like three days. Like it was like three days that I let the initial. I filled this with water, mm -hmm. let it sit, and then I then I poured that out, and then I put it, and then I filled it again for another twenty four hours. Okay. And that was to get rid of all the wood chunks and yeah, the sure. you know that kind of thing. Um, and then and then after that we. Um, immediately filled that yeah with uh with our whiskey yeah because so, you don't want to let it sit empty you don't want dry space in there uh because basically the wood dries out then you start getting leakage i suppose yeah absolutely and where i was storing this too there's a um you know, there's just concentric rings of uh you know where where whiskey has leaked out yeah. and uh you know so there is the angel share of that so um it wasn't a lot but it but it was certainly steady enough where you know that there was you know there was leakage in there so even with the with the you know with the wood swelling you know there mm -hmm. there was still you know you know something to contend with um well and that's going to happen naturally anyhow it's a natural product plus again with expansion and contraction it's going to push it through the pores um but i guess a couple key things number one like you said put water in it initially get the wood to swell up rinse it out and then don't put it on top of anything that you value furniture wise because you're <laughs> probably going to get some seepage yeah i put it over i put it on top of a workbench so we're good in fact uh my workbench smells amazing <laughs> <laughs> it's funny so my office is where i keep all the scotch you know i made those shelves it smells friggin' fantastic. I, know, I love right? walking in there. It sucks that I work in there on occasion, but at least I've got a, a decent aroma going. But uh, yeah, that's too funny. But uh, you know, rather than doing an infinity bottle, I think this, maybe not necessarily this size cask, but perhaps a smaller cask is the way to go. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And uh, I think I'm to get like a two liter because I, I really want to play with the cask strength. Yeah. And I also want to play with the um, um, with the uh, with the peated whiskeys, you know, the smoky peated. You know, I want to I may I want to make a peat peat monster. We have the technology. Yeah, we really do. And hmm. uh, so it'll be interesting to see what we uh, you know what I decide to kind of you know we're gonna have to play around with that to see what we could you know you know what would be our base on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're basically doing what the master blender does at a lot of these distilleries. Uh, you know, you try and figure out a flavor profile that you're comfortable with, and then you mix what you've got on hand to get to that flavor profile. Yeah, absolutely. But you don't want to, I'm not going to use really expensive whiskeys into this. Yeah, thing. I agree with Nothing that. more than like $40 a bottle, that kind of thing. Because if it goes sideways. Yeah, yeah you don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be in, I don't want to be out tears of on camera. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, this is a learning experience. We've got to figure out what flavors will work well together, because there's a huge difference between an Ardbeg and a Lafroix. Certainly, yeah, and uh, you know, and as we gain our confidence with this, yeah. you know, we're, you know, we're, you know, we may end up shying it toward, you know, hey, I want to use this particular bottle because it brings this particular yeah. profile to it, and that's something that I do appreciate. You know, we don't blow through our whiskey collection very quickly. I've got a lot of bottles that are probably three quarters full, uh, sitting on the shelf at home, and. Look, there's maintenance that goes with that, too. As we were discussing earlier, it's important. If you have a whiskey collection, to tip the bottle every now and then and just wet that cork, because if you don't, the cork will dry out, and it will break up, and you'll end up with cork bits in your whiskey. Now, as we discussed previously, those aren't necessarily a bad thing, but they don't add to the taste, so it's best avoided if possible. Yeah, you want to strain them out. Yeah. Um, you know, now, uh, we also ran into a, a whiskey today, they use an artificial cork, and uh, we think that's yeah. really smart. I, I agree. Now, we haven't seen what those do long-term, but I can tell you, based on my experience so far, they certainly hold up better than cork. Um, you know, the problem with cork is that whiskey bottles, unlike wine bottles, are meant to stand up. Wine bottles, you lay on their side, and that way the wine comes in contact with the cork and keeps it moist and keeps it from breaking up. If you do that with whiskey, if you take whiskey bottles and you store them horizontally, the whiskey will actually attack the cork and the cork will break down. But on the other hand, if you stand them up and you never agitate them, the cork dries out and now you run into another issue. So cork is a bit problematic when it comes to whiskeys and I think that's why the synthetic ones are, in my opinion, the direction to go. Um, 
especially for those of us that don't polish off a bottle very quickly perhaps you know maybe you've got something special sitting on the shelf you don't blow through it but you know the 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 uh but whiskey is steeped in tradition so yeah you know you're you know they you know some of these have been making whiskeys for like 100 years mm -hmm. you know more and uh, they don't really want to change you know their you know their their styling their packaging sure. their you know anything along the, you know sometimes there's some updating that happens but really you know if you list if you go and uh you know you buy uh you know what's what's one of the older ones you know like uh Oh heck, even Glenn Livet. Like Glenn Livet. I mean a Glenn Livet is a Glenn Livet. Yep. You know, you're you're very getting slow it very change. similar. Yeah, very slow to change. You know, they're they're you know, and and believe me, we're not shitting on Glenn Livet. Yeah. But it's but it but it carries that whiskey tradition and those things are very important to them. Yeah. For somebody again, this just a casual drinker, maybe you have only one or two bottles on the shelf and you know, they they'll be gone in a year cork is perfectly fine um, again longer storage that's where I think the synthetic really comes in because it's not going to break down over time it uh, the other thing I found with cork is over time they actually shrink a little bit oh, yeah. and they don't seal as well and I haven't seen that happen with the synthetics so I guess we'll see in time but personally that's my preference yeah get a little extra air into the bottle and everything that's going to change the flavor yeah well I've got a Glenlivet that, it, that did exactly that and I will say it tastes really good right now but <laughs> it is a it's probably well below 40 percent ABV but it is tasty I'm not gonna lie there you go excellent well I've got to say I've been pleasantly surprised by this um, this was a fun one we didn't have to call 911 neither one of us is keeled over on the floor so this is good next 24 hours will tell the tale <laughs> yeah that's also true so uh what do you think three more months three more months all yeah. right we'll try it again so in uh march yeah well into yeah. march and we've got the cooler weather right now so i don't think we're going to see that dramatic of a change in that period of time i i imagine summer will have more of an impact than yes. the cooler weather yeah i want i want to run this through the summer I think that and I think that's yeah. probably gonna tell the tale I agree but we'll try it again in three more months so uh, we'll try it at the end of March and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see where we are yeah I'm looking forward to it again I'm I'm just shocked how well this has turned out all thus right. far and uh, <laughs> maybe our luck will hold all right and uh, I'll try and figure out what the recipe was I mean we know what went into it we just don't know the quantities specifically but I'll try and get you a ballpark and post that up yeah we were kind of eyeballing it yeah we might have had a drink or two yeah, before maybe. we did this possibly it could happen um, we do have a couple folks uh, Mandy McDonald thank you for joining us and uh, Tom Cushman again good to see you my friend Ron Schmidt and uh, the usual gang including Cheryl and uh, Jason Toma Again, thanks for joining thanks us, guys. Thanks for joining us. All right, um, if you like what we're doing, um, you know, give us a like. Uh, yeah. Find us. You can find us on Facebook, um, uh, Instagram, and uh, and YouTube. Just type in a Spirited Endeavor. Absolutely. And uh, we look forward to hearing what you're drinking and how you like it, and uh, give us some some suggestions. Um, and we're going to try to get a few folks on with us in uh, upcoming episodes yeah. uh, to hear about their experiences and everything, too. So we're really excited about that, too. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. It's been a blast uh, for us. And uh, look forward to revisiting this in about three months. All right. Sláinte. Take care, guys. <laughs>